Are you looking for an aggro experience that's not just mono red goblins or mono green stompy? Do you seek to crush the meek and cascade your way to value town, all while playing a deck that's tough to disrupt, has tricks up its sleeve, and costs only about 20 bucks? Then have I got a deck for you. Cascade into value town with red green cascade aggro. Red green cascade aggro is a neat way to play a two color deck in pauper. Normally doing so is a challenge, especially in aggro. Despite having access to Terramorphic Expanse, Evolving Wilds, Ash Barrens, the Ravnica Bounce Lands, and Cons of Tarkir Gain Lands, it is still hard to have a consistent, aggressive, multicolored deck. This has to do with the tempo cost of adding a second color. Decks like Stompy and Red Deck Wins avoid this by running a single color, but their gameplay can end up being linear and sometimes limited. But Red Green cast Cascade Aggro mitigates all this by utilizing some of the biggest value cards in both colors while tapping into the close to broken Cascade mechanic, which we thankfully have access to at the common level. Altogether, these cards combine to make a deck that's too cool and too gruel for school, smashing its way to victory. This is Popper, so the deck never rotates. Once you buy it, you have it to play for life. And best of all, it only costs about $20, so let's take a look. Cascade Aggro isn't on the big radar yet. That might just be one reason why you can still put it together for about 20 bucks. But more and more are starting to pick it up. Ever since Kazuya3 was the first player to 5-0 with it in a league, people were starting to check out this interesting list. And for further watching, I cannot recommend enough that you go over to Jeff of Any New Province's YouTube channel and watch this 5-0 run he did with a list in the description below. But where I first heard of Cascade was actually the fabulous Color Commentary Popper podcast, which if you are not listening to, you need to go check out right away. And I'll also link Color Commentary's episode talk Cascade and Gruel and Popper in this video's description. What makes this deck so great? Obviously, if this is a Cascade deck, one of our key cards will be a Cascade card. In this case, a playset of Violent Outburst. Played in modern in the famous Living End deck, Violent Outburst is a bit costly at 50 cents each, but it's worth it. Cascade is a mechanic that's very near to being broken. For a red, a green, and one mana of any color, you give your creatures plus one, plus zero until end of turn at instant speed, and you also cascade. Cascade, of course, means that when you cast this spell, exile cards from the top of your library until you exile a non-land card that costs less. You may cast it without paying its mana cost. While it can do more broken things in other formats, here at instant speed, what it will do for us is, with a few minor exceptions, give us a free free haste creature, but that's going to be awesome. Ideally, we cast Violent Outburst before we declare attackers, get our free haste creature, and yeah, that cascaded creature gets the bonus. We can also cast Violent Outburst after our opponents have declared attackers and, with a bit of luck, get a surprise blocker. We'll take a look at our key attackers in a moment, but first, the second most important card in this deck, Burning Tree Emissary. Downshifted to common in Modern Masters 2017 and thus popper legal, this may even be more important than Violent Outburst. 25 cents each for a two hybrid red-green mana. When Burning Tree Emissary enters the battlefield, add a red and add a green to your mana pool. This is how we mitigate the usual loss of tempo in multicolored aggro decks in Popper. Castable off of any two lands in the deck, Burning Tree can cast every creature in the deck. Well, almost every creature. This is the card that really makes our deck hum. As you'll see in a moment, it also casts every other two drop in the deck. Being able to chain multiple creatures together or multiple Burning Tree emissaries makes it far easier to win. With so few sweepers in the Popper format, it's possible to just flat out win on the second turn thanks to flooding the board. Okay, so what are we cascading into? What are we burning tree into? Despite the fact that we are in Gruul, the deck runs both play sets of Jund Hackblade and Naya Hushblade. These Alara Reborn draft stars get a bonus for having other multicolored permanents on the battlefield. In the case of our play set of Jund Hackblade, which by the way is only 15 cents each, if we have a multicolored permanent on our side of the board, the Hackblade is going to be a 3-2 with haste. That is well above rate. 
Jund Hackblade is a potent offensive threat, and when active can end the game in short order if left uncontested. The playset of Naya Hushblade are subtle all-stars of the deck. Now of course this has Shroud and not Hexproof, so that means you can't target it yourself. And that might seem like a bit of a non-bow with our playset of Elephant Guide enchantments. But if needed, you can get around this by enchanting the Hushblade before you control a multicolored permanent. That's pretty nice, however, just having a 3-2 early on is often better and all we'll need. Either way, Elephant Guide is going to make our creatures bigger and leaves them resilient to removal. If you find yourself trouble punching through, Ranker fills a similar role and has the added benefit of coming back from the dead, but I've found in my testing that I prefer the Elephant Guides. The deck also runs playsets of Mud Brawler Cohort and Rip Clan Crushers. Mud Brawler Cohort is another 2-2 haste for two. Some players have played around with Valley Dasher, and if you are worried about getting blown out by removal shrinking your other red creatures, then you may want to give it a try, but I like not being forced to attack each turn. Rip Clan Crasher is another 2-2 with haste for two. Again, this could be almost anything else that has the same stats and can attack immediately. One of the allures of the deck is its redundancy, and also the fact that there's opportunities to experiment and fine-tuning, which is great for the deck brewers in the audience. At one drop, we run a pair of Frenzied Goblins and a playset of Curd Ape. Frenzied Goblin is a 1-1 one, one for 1 where whenever Frenzied Goblin attacks, you may pay 2. If you do, target creature can't block this turn. You're going to have excess mana available, so you might as well put it to use. Frenzied Goblin helps to shut off a blocker each combat. If you find this card isn't to your liking, you can use Intimidator Initiate, which is similar except it triggers off of red spells and you can pay the cost with green mana as well. Curd Ape is also a 1-1 one, one for 1, but gets plus 1 plus 2 as long as we control a forest. While not an actual gold card, the Curd Ape is great value as a 2-3 for just 1 mana, assuming we control a forest. Nothing much to say here, just turn it sideways for aggressive value. Alright, so there's one creature we run that we can neither Cascade into or Burning Tree into, and that's Goblin Heel Cutter. We run a pair of these, and Goblin Heel Cutter serves the purpose of being a sink for that excess mana, where we essentially turn all that mana into a shutdown blocker. Heel Cutter is a 3-2 for 3 of any color and a red, and whenever it attacks, target creature can't block this turn. Dash also works nicely against Sorcery Speed Removal, where for 2 and a red, you may cast this spell for its dash cost. If you do, it gains haste and its return from the battlefield to its owner's hand at the beginning of the next 10 step. Next, we are in red, so a playset of Lightning Bolt is going to be in this deck. Now, I've seen several lists running instead playsets of Chain Lightning, but Lightning Bolt is better in almost every way except it can be countered by Dispel. But that's the only difference, and just run Lightning Bolt. To help with our mana, we also run a pair of Firewild Border Posts. Border Posts are a weird cycle. They let you return a basic land and pay one for a dual land, or just pay three, in this case one of any color, a green and a red, for full value. Both times they enter tapped. Normally passed over, the blades make them an alluring option. Since Border Post is a gold card, it turns them on. The problem is that they are vulnerable to artifact hate. Still, the upside here is enough to warrant running the pseudo lands. Obviously, our mana base needs a full set of fetch lands, Lands, but since this is Popper, those fetch lands are four evolving wilds. Beyond that, five forests, nine mountains. Not much to see here, folks. Red-green Cascade Aggro also provides room for improvement. I mentioned a few alternatives in this video already, but feel free to experiment with the main board as well as with the side. In terms of those sideboards, here's a list I feel is highly effective, but be sure to fine-tune as you see fit. Three Mark of Mutiny for when you're racing. In those cases, stealing a key blocker and crunching in for extra damage is very nice. Three, Blazing Volley. While Electricery may be more flexible, Blazing Volley will take out tokens even when you cascade into it. Three, Pulse of Marasa gets you back key creatures and helps you stay alive. A pair of Flame Slash for when you really need to clear out a blocker. As well as a pair of River Boa. You're playing Red Green Aggro, of course you're gonna hate Islands. And people playing Islands hate the Boa. 
as well as a pair of natural state to nuke artifact lands and pesky copies of Journey to Nowhere. Red-Green Aggro is a great first deck for Popper. It has plenty of room for improvement and subtle tweaks here and there will make it that much stronger. Work with this list, both mainboard and sideboard as a base, and then tweak and improve the deck over time, better tuning it for your personal playstyle and local metagame. Best of all, it's $20 to start playing Popper today. But either way, I hope very much this video has been of some help to you. You can help me out by remembering to like, share, subscribe, or just by leaving a comment. What deck would you like to see a tech on next? Let me know in the comments below. And this video is brought to you by my and many other people's local game store, Card Kingdom, a brick and mortar pillar of this community, as well as the Patreon support of viewers such as you. These are the people that keep Talarian Community College going and growing strong. So thank you.